Hello and welcome to Double Portion, a Portion Ministries 52-week series. This is week 51. Today is actually Christmas Eve. It's before work. Yes, I have to work on Christmas Eve, but you know, certain things that you do. I actually enjoy my job sometimes, most of the time. So um, thank you for joining us. Your portion this week is light. L-I-G-H-T, capital L, light. Jesus is the perfect gift, but one of his names, purposes, roles, or characteristics is light. So our exhortation this week, we will be looking at the element of light. This is the Christmas season. A lot of people focus on baby Jesus or they focus on Mary. And, and uh, my husband, when he did the men's call on Sunday, he f you focus on the Joseph in the story. But I want us to focus on the fact that this is a light that came to bring light into the world. Even the song that I was hearing was light of the world. You stepped out into darkness or the other piece that's in that song that a lot of people are singing right now. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. So I want us to know him as we cross over out of 2019 into 2020. He is that light in the darkness. But guess what? It, the dark don't have to stay dark. So Holy Spirit, we give you access to come into this time of exhortation that you would come and continually turn on the light. Give us revelation, illumination. That means you're illuminating the darkness. Give us revelation, illumination, knowledge, insight, wisdom, grace upon grace upon grace to fulfill everything that you have us alive in the land of the living to fulfill in this time and in this season. Thank you, God, that we can come and pray to you according to your word. Thank you for this assignment of double portion and a portion ministries to reveal unto us our portion, our inheritance, that we would plug in and know it for real, though, and then receive the double of it. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to give a shout out to our covering bishop, uh, Bishop Sippy Sellers. This word was actually prepared to be delivered on Sunday. I'm not going to deliver it all in this 20-minute class. Clip, but uh, it, you will hear this come up again. But thank you, Bishop, for um, giving me the assignment to pull together this word. I knew I was hearing it, and then and and I didn't go forward with it. But God said it was it was for me. Understand this: as ministers of the gospel, even as fivefold uh, ministers, whatever your your assignment or title is, I know that I operate as a prophetic teacher in the fivefold ministry gifts. You got to do it for you first, minister to yourself first. And so this is the Christmas season and, and, and it's about Christ mass. It's about more Christ. And so if it's more Christ, he's the reason for the season. And that's what we need to keep the focus on him, not on the gift giving and all that other stuff that's going, because truly he is the light of the world that was sent to deliver mankind from the state of darkness that was created by the fall of man in Genesis chapter three. That's where the darkness, I mean, the darkness was in Genesis chapter one. In the beginning, it was all dark. And the word dark means chaos. And, and, and then when he said, let there be light, that meant let there be order. And so that was a plan that was made before the earth was made. But then it was enacted. Okay, let me just stay on my notes. <laughs> Christ, the anointed one. That is his title. Christ, the anointed one. That is his title. So when we look at the word Christmas, it's saying Christ mass. So we're saying, I want more of the anointed one. I want the light turned on more and more. When we're saying we're called Christ Johns, we're saying we're Christ light. That means we need to be walking in the anointing. And guess what? The anointing will cost you. And the anointing is not cheap. And the anointing, like with oil, it only comes through a crushing process. I'm going to stop with that part right there for us to know. There's a song that we sing a lot and hear a lot during this season. And we say, Emmanuel, God with us. I, I, and I love that song. I really love that song. But And I woke up on Sunday. I began to hear the text of where that song came from. Let me just read a few. I'm going to read three scriptures in our hearing or maybe quote them. Um, this is another 
scripture that is very well known during this season, Isaiah chapter nine, verse six through seven, it says, for to us, a child is born, to us, a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called. These are his names. This is who Jesus is. He's wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father of eternity. He's the prince of peace and of the increase of his government. Stop tripping on the U.S. government, but of the increase of his government, find your place as an ambassador in the government of the kingdom. Anyway, as a increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from the latter time forth, even forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So that's telling of this son that's coming. But Isaiah 7, 14 tells us that therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Jesus is a sign. The, the, what, what we're celebrating in this season, although it didn't occur in this season, what occurred in this season was conception, not his birth. But anyway, I'm not going to go into that. It says, behold, the young woman who was unmarried and a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. And so in Matthew 1, it says, behold, the virgin shall become pregnant. It's quoting this Isaiah 7 in Matthew 1. And so I said, well, wait a minute. You said you shall call his name Emmanuel. Why didn't he, why is his name Jesus? And, and I found this note that says, uh, Joseph didn't name Jesus Emmanuel, but Jesus's nature makes him truly Emmanuel, God with us. It, Isaiah told us to watch for Emmanuel, the virgin born of the son of God. He will save us. He will reconcile his people to God and restore creation to its original beauty. We know him as Jesus, but we can also call him God with us because that's exactly who he is. So that first scripture I read in Isaiah 9, when it said, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, that is who he is. And he is always with us. Kathy Taylor has a song, um, uh, God is with us. And so when you begin to listen to that, that God is with us during this season, that's what we're celebrating. It is not about gifts and, and Santa Claus and Christmas trees. Now, I'm not saying that you can't give gifts because you're in the world, not of the world. So when, when, when you're going to do some things, but listen to me, that's not the focus. I always made a point to have make sure that my children knew what Christ mass was all about. That they And I would teach them every single year what it was all about because I didn't. It was my job. It's my job to train the next generation. That was part of my life purpose was to train them up in the way to go and then get out the way and let them do what they do. And I'm just their intercessor praying over the seeds that I sowed. Okay, so I'm just putting that out there. So anyway, that all of that seven minute intro was not nothing about my message on the light, but it meant a lot for us to understand the season in which we're in. So now we're gonna look at this celebration of the light of the world in Genesis one, verse one through five. Now I quoted, I'm not, not Genesis, John chapter one, verse one through five. I quoted Genesis, which when you look at John one, it sounds like Genesis. It's an answer. It's a rebuttal to Genesis. So we're in John chapter one. It says, in the beginning, before all time, was the word, Christ, and the word was with God. Now, if the word was with God, it says, and the word was God himself. He was present originally with God. See, before this, all of this happened, before you and me, it says, before you were in your mother's womb, did I know you back then? That's, he was God. The word was with him. His name was word. His name in the heavenly realm is word. It's not Jesus. His name is Jesus here in the earth realm. Um, verse three, all things were made and came into existence through him. And without him was not even one thing made that has come into being. What I'm hearing Holy Spirit say is right there. Look at Proverbs chapter eight. Proverbs chapter eight is talking about wisdom and it's a capital W and that is the wisdom, the word of God, the wisdom of God was with God in the beginning when everything was formed. Keep reading. Verse four, it says in him was life and the life was the light of men. Let there be light in, in Jesus, in the word that was in the beginning. And he spoke it in there was the light of the beginning. And the light shines on in the darkness for the darkness has never overpowered it, put it out or absorbed it or appropriated it. 
and it is unreceptive to it. Now, let me take this sidebar that I scribbled in, in my notes, in my handwriting, for us to see that in this time, in this season, your portion is to turn on the light, to amplify his character, the quality of light in your life, like there in Genesis 1. Um, some may be in the dark night of the soul. There are generational curses that are attached to this season in which we're in, where depression comes in. And because of unforgiveness, truth be told, and because of being mistreated and because of the generational curses that have operated in your life, this is a season that a lot of people don't like. But hold up. Don't sit there in the dark. Turn on the light. Change your focus. I'm giving you my testimony. This is what I had to do. Okay? Receive the light. Increase from glory to glory. Get you more light and more light and more light. That's really what it's all about. Understand this, that Jesus' natural conception was a supernatural occurrence that took place during this season that we're in. Um, in Luke 1 verse 35, when, when uh, Mary was having the conversation with Gabe, the angel, <laughs> And she said, how can this be? And he said that this, 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 uh, she was going to overshadow. Let me, let me read it. I, and then this one I wrote out in my own handwriting too. I said, Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the most high will overshadow you like a shining cloud. In order for there to be a shadow, there's some darkness that's there and the light comes on. So he overshadowed the dark situation like a shining cloud. There is the light again. Light is needed to cast a shadow. Uh, that So God wants to overshadow you. There may be some dark areas in your life, but turn on the light and cause him overshadow means it's going to overtake the shadow. John 8 verse 10, once more, Jesus addressed the crowd. He said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not be walking in the dark, but will have the light of which is life. So here we have the light life. Your portion is to understand the light life. And, and understand this, this text in John 8 verse 12, where he's a, identifying himself as the light of the world is sandwiched between right before that in John chapter eight, it's talking about the woman caught in adultery, and, but she was forgiven. You see that in verse one through 11. And then after this, this portion of text, you see Jesus warning against unbelief. So we can take note that light is needed to bring forgiveness and to keep us out of unbelief and religious questionings. What you talking about, Paulette? Read John chapter 8 with this one sentence in mind, that the light is needed to bring forgiveness and to keep us out of unbelief and religious questionings. Mm -hmm. light. And that's why Holy Spirit said the gift that I want to amplify to those that are listening in this time and in this season is the gift of light, the life light that you're called to be. And guess what? In the Apostle Paul's account before King Agrippa in Acts 26, he told of his personal encounter with the light that happened to him in Acts chapter nine. But we're gonna go to Acts 26 um, for your notes. Those note takers is verse 13 through 19, but I'm just gonna jump right in to verse 18. And 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 basically he was telling King Agrippa what had happened to him. He was like, I was, yeah, I was doing, I, did, I didn't understand what Christians were. I was killing them, I was taking them out, was what he was saying. And then he began to, to tell what was going to, let me just go to verse 13. When on the road at midday, O king, I saw a light from heaven surpassing the brightness of the sun flashing about me and those who were traveling with me. And, and we, and so jump down. So he's giving a account of what was going on. So verse 17, he said, God was speaking to him in, in the regular Bible. This is in the red letter, verse 17 and 18, where God is speaking to him and telling him what the call of God on his life is. He said, I'm choosing you out, selecting you for myself and delivering you from among those Jewish people and the Gentiles to whom I am sending you to open their eyes that they may run, they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive so that they may thus receive forgiveness and release from their sins and a place and a portion among those who are consecrated and purified by faith in me. And then he went on to say, and I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. So when the light comes on in your life, don't be disobedient. 
I thank God for the example of obedience where he told me at the beginning of the year, Paulette, I want you to do a 52 week series. We on week 51. I was not disobedient to the vision that you gave me in the light. And it's not just for Paulette. It's for every single one of us that are listening, that are watching. Paul later wrote to the church at Ephesus regarding the works of light and darkness. Read it in, in Ephesians 5. The, the whole Ephesians 5 is talking about the works of light and darkness where you once were in the dark, but now because you have Holy Spirit, you are in the light. And, and, and it, it, at verse six, it says, don't let no one delude and deceive you with empty excuses and groundless arguments for these sins. So yeah, there's sins that's going on, but you have the light. Verse eight was where I wanted to go when it says, for once you were darkness, once that was, that was your story, that, that was my testimony. I never act like I never walked in the dark. And I must turn the light on every single day because the dark still tries to creep back in. He said, once you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. You are light in the Lord. What, what are you in? You're in the world, but not of the world. You're in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Lead the lives of those native born to the light for the fruit, the effect, the product of the light or the spirit consists in every form of kindly goodness, uprightness of heart and trueness of life. Let me tell you, like on last week, I hear what you're saying, but your actions are speaking so loud. I can't hear what you're saying. What are your love actions? What are your light actions? If you're of the light, I can see light. And light is, is, is described right here at verse nine of Ephesians chapter five. It's going to be kindly goodness, uprightness of heart. It's going to be trueness of life. Um, and then Paul also told, look, look, Paul, because he had an encounter in the light, it changed his life. Everybody's not called to be an apostle, Paul, but the light will change your life. It'll change the trajectory. It'll change your purpose. You were purposed and destined for something else, but you were believing a false destiny. I got a series on destiny that I pray you get a chance to watch. I'm going to try and put it in the link of this to understand that there are destiny blockers that are trying to keep you from getting into your destiny. Oh, Jesus. But in Romans chapter 13, let me see this. In his discourse on Christian conduct. This is what Paul was telling the church at Rome, how they were to conduct themselves as Christ-like people. It began Romans chapter 12 through Romans chapter 13, but I'm going to jump in at chapter 13 where he's telling them right here, verse nine, the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet or have an evil desire and any other commandment are summed up in the single command, you shall love your neighbor as you do yourself. We talked about love last week. We talked about love in action. What does love look like? Verse 10, love does no wrong to, to one's neighbor. It never hurts anybody. Therefore, love meets all the requirements and is the fulfilling of the law. Mm. Jump down to verse 12. The night is far gone and the day is almost here. See, the light is, is coming forth is what he's saying. Let us then drop, fling away the works and deeds of darkness and put on the full armor of light. So there is an armor of light that we ought to put on, but fling away the darkness. He, he didn't say the dark wasn't going to be there. The dark is there. It went on in verse 13 of Romans 13. Let us live and conduct ourselves honorably and becomingly as in the open light of day, not in, in the darkness. It goes on to say all of that. So in some strange, I found this note about the significance of light. It was in my, I have a types and shadows book and I was looking up what are the types and shadows of light? What are the symbols of light? And I found this quote. So let me just read it to us as I'm about to conclude. It said, in some strange way, the entrance of Christ into the life and heart enables the mind to become intelligent and intellectual. Now keep this in mind. I'm not telling you to get that Greek mindset. You got to have a Hebraic mindset. And when you get the mind of God, that's the Hebraic mindset. You tap into this intelligence and intellect that comes from above because Holy Spirit is leading you and downloading unto you. It says only where Jesus Christ is loved and his word is preached, do we find minds active for the blessing of others and alert in inventing that which will be a blessing to mankind. Christ Jesus must be permitted to rule and reign in the heart of the people and the word of God is where, and the word of God is read, preached and taught publicly and without hindrance. That's what we've been doing for 52 weeks. 
reading the word, teaching it, preaching it, because I'm a preacher. But on this line, I try and stay more to the teaching. Lastly, I want to close as I began in John chapter one. I want to turn to first John chapter one. The book of our, the epistles of John are all about the love of God. And did you see a theme going through all throughout all of this about love, 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 love? Well, in first John chapter one, read it all on your own. But in the beginning, it talks about the word of life in the beginning, right there in, in verse one of first John chapter one. But I want to jump down to verse seven. But if we really are living and walking in the light as he himself is in the light, we have true unbroken fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanses, removes us from all sin and guilt, keeps us cleansed from sin and is, and it keeps us cleansed from sin in all its forms and manifestations. And so verse, this is where we always quote first John one nine that says, if we confess our sins, will you confess your sins in the light with the blood of Jesus? I know I've said a lot. That's why I record them. It's on YouTube. You can go back and listen to it again. I'm going to stop it right there because I wanted to keep this right at 20 minutes. I'm using a new camera that will let me go past 20 minutes, but my instructions from God was 20 minutes. So God, I thank you for the light of the world, stepping out into darkness, opening our eyes and letting us see. That's the song. And I thank you that we get a better understanding of this season of pressing into the light and turning on the light. Let us be light in darkness. Let this be a season that we're growing and the light is getting greater brighter and brighter and brighter. Thank you for every admonition from the apostle Paul in the word of God for us to be the light, to turn on the light, that you get the glory and the honor and the praise in our lives. We got one more week left. Join me next week. I pray you're blessed in Jesus name. Amen.